Welcome to this week's edition of the Gridiron Sponsored by Patriots Chevrolet. I'm your host, John Brown, with the head coach, Chad Brubaker. Springford fell in its season finale, 42-17 to to the Prots Grove Falcons, to close out their regular season with a 4-6 and six record. Now, once again, we've been doing this show a long time, Coach, here. I don't think we've ever talked about a record like that for this program at the end of the regular season. But I think those that have watched this team as well this year notice the team you put out there week one is nowhere like the team you put out there in week 10, too. Yeah, I mean, we don't like to, you know, make excuses, but the reality is that, you know, we were down, I think, eight defensive starters on Friday, and we were still leading going into the fourth quarter before the wheels kind of fell off. Yeah, um, yeah you know, we got Giassi Romu back um, at, you know, he worked his, I just want to take a moment, like that kid tend to practice every day, uh, rehabbed to get back on the field with a, a, a shoulder injury and came back in and was down within two series. And I, I feel so bad for, for him, but it just kind of, I want, it speaks to like his dedication and, and wanting to get back on the field. Um, but we lost him too. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's difficult. We hung in there for a while. Um, but when it went south, it, it went south pretty quickly. Yeah, obviously. So once again, up 10 nothing after a quarter. You're down 14-10 at the half, so bad second quarter. Get yourself back in the game in the third quarter. You get a score, and then just it just looked like the wheels fell off. Everything that could have went wrong does go wrong. You know, when you look at any of the things at the end of the game, six turnovers for you guys is obviously the huge glaring thing you're looking at at the end of the day is big reason why you're losing the game. Yeah, and, you know, Offensively, we struggled to run the ball at times. Like, you know, Potsgrove was smart. Like, they understand, um, you know, where we have new guys at positions. And, you know, defensively, they loaded the box, um, played man-to-man -man for much of the night to, you know, the difference between man-to-man -man coverage and zone coverage is you can throw to windows. Man coverage, you got to be, you know, you got to hit your guy in stride. and. Um, and, you know, so they, they did a smart thing, um, but the turnovers kind of, uh, you know, the turnovers are, aren't, aren't good. And, and a couple of them, um, one of them happened in the red zone going in. Um, another one happened was pick six. Um, but, uh, it's, that's very difficult to overcome six sure. turnovers and, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, all young players need time to, um, you know, you can do all you want at practice, but they need game experience. Um, practice, you just can't replicate mm -hmm. the pressure or, you know, in practice, we're not obviously taking guys to the ground and even in like live yeah. situations. So, you know, it's really hard to replicate that. And, it, you know, if you start to get out of your head a little bit, it's difficult, and um, you know Trent's going to be a very good high school football player, um, and and some of our younger guys are you know on the flip side, some of our younger guys are getting experience, you know on on the field. Um, so we try to find silver linings. You try to find silver linings, but you know that game in the fourth quarter um, was difficult to swallow, and and uh, was disappointing for everybody. You know I. Um, yeah. So. And I guess one of the things we've kind of, you know, talked about in this show are the two divisions, the Liberty and, and boy, this was the year of the frontier. Their top four teams beat the top four teams of the Liberty division. PJP beat PV. Uh, Phoenix Hill shuts out. Owen J. Roberts, Pottsgrove River, you guys, and Upper Perk beats Methacton. So once again, you know, you, you got to go out there and you got to go play the games. And kudos to that frontier division for stepping up in these crossover games because yeah. in the past there's been stories written about how oh the you know the liberty division wins these it's 6-0 it's 5-1 year after year so kudos yeah. to them for going 4-2 yeah. this week too yeah definitely and and that was one of the things that you know um we were kind of asking for in the past was to amp up our schedule and you know we got our wish and um it, i think in the long run that will be helpful um you know, right now, I think that some of the teams um, were beaten up pretty good by their schedule. 
and um, you know that obviously weighs on you. You know it's um, difficult. You know even if you have a bigger roster, there's only X amount of kids that are ready for varsity football. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, you're trying to get those other guys ready. And if there's injuries that happen at positions of where there's not a lot of depth, um, you know, it ends up you're playing somebody that probably isn't quite ready for varsity football. And that's, you know, that kind of happened on Friday. Right. And it's kind of like what you're alluding to here a little bit is that you're putting some guys out there that probably aren't maybe ready for prime time. And they're saying, well, we think our guys are better than your guys at this. And these young guys or new guys got to figure it out pretty fast that like, Especially these skill guys, you know, like, you yeah. know, like it's a, it's a different level between that JV varsity level. Oh, absolutely. Too. Absolutely. And, and, um, you know, our kids got, um, introduced to that, you know, no matter what, you know, Pots a, a 5A team. Um, yeah, the past few weeks we've had, uh, numerous guys on, on the field, um, that, you know, have an opportunity because of an injury and, um, you know, that's that's a lot yeah. like it moves a lot faster than a JV game a yeah. lot faster than practice too sure and once again we kind of talked about last week's show the gr the Grove just kind of has gotten our number a little bit in these uh in these crossover games and, and like going yeah, back listen through. they have a good staff and and um you know they put us in binds on both sides of the football you know we wanted to um defensively play a little more cover too when we did that they would you know, run the ball when we would try to bring a safety down the box, they would throw. Um, and, um, you know, like I already mentioned, you know, they pack the box on defense to try to take away Jamal and, and force us to win on the perimeter. And um, we made some plays, just not enough yeah. plays. And it goes to show what happens here now when we're going the postseason where, you know, that gets the Grove a home game. Phoenixville moved up to three. Upper Perk moved up maybe one or two to, like, assure themselves in yeah. it and you saw PV drop you guys drop you know like in the yeah. district rankings too so it was a lot of ramifications were really going on in that in that week 10 of uh, the crossover go with it yeah and you can make a lot of arguments about like a four and six team shouldn't make the playoffs but it does speak to the strength of our schedule mm -hmm. um, obviously um, the teams that we played outside of our um, league schedule you know, I think Souderton ended up at seven and three. Yeah, I think they're going to maybe three. PW or something like that. So they're so, yeah, they're district game. That we Easton's beat, number one in District Eleven, right. and both Downey County, East and West are in the in the field as well. Then too. Yeah, and and so it speaks to you know our strength of schedule and and um, you know I think like I said in the long run I think that will benefit our program. Okay, all right, coach. Good segment right there. Let's check out the offensive highlights from Springford Pottsgrove. Offensive highlights are sponsored by JC Auto Service. This was a really nice play, you know, and there's Trent hits uh, Jordan, Jordan Marsilio right in stride. Um, you know, we're trying, it is an RPO. We're trying to get a little more room for that. You see that linebacker stepped up and, and we made room. Like normally in, in man coverage, RPOs aren't exactly the best, but it does open lanes up a little bit. This was a, a nice throw, um, you know, Trent showed some maturity there standing in the pocket because he didn't get his first read and then he didn't get his second read and, and our offensive line cross. did a really nice job and he finally finds the guy uh, that's Jordan again coming across the middle. So that was that was really, you know, that was beyond his years. This was a tremendous throw Great catch uh, by step. Trent on a smash route. Um, Chase Blanken. Runs a great route there and uh, catches the ball on the sideline for a, a big gain. You know, Jamal is uh, 25 yards away from 1,000. We'd like to get him the ball um, and get him that, that mark. But this is a really nice play by uh, freshman Rowan Harmon. Ball's a little off target, but he, he goes down and gets it outstretched. This was a really nice play by Trent. You know, he read this play perfectly. He's reading the um, inside linebacker on the backside. He and this is what his, gets you back up in the game here, yeah, too, right? Yeah, he ducks his head inside, and, and Trent just barrels into the end zone for a touchdown. So there are positives. There were positives. Sure. Um, obviously not enough of them, but um, there were positives to the game on Friday night. And, and we just, you know, we talk about consistency all year. Um, that's – we weren't consistent, sure. and we made turnovers. So Yeah, all right, Coach. Well, uh, 
Good segment. I think the people of the crowd enjoyed that little segment. We're going to take a quick commercial break, all right? Yep. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with the defensive highlights from Springford Potsgrave. Welcome to the Rothman Orthopedics Urgent Care and Walk-In Centers. When dealing with pain or injury, our Urgent Care and Walk-In Centers are the ideal place to start your care for all of your orthopedic issues. Our team of physician assistants are available to treat patients eight years of age and older for a variety of orthopedic issues, including sprains, strains, tears, back pain, fractures, and weekend warrior injuries. No appointment is necessary. Don't wait. Start the path to recovery at the Rothman Orthopedics Walk-In Center or Urgent Care. Welcome back to the Gridiron, sponsored by Patriot Chevrolet. I'm your host, John Brennan, with head coach Chad Brubaker. All right, coach, uh, I guess like, we did allude to it a little bit. We, we did, still did make the district playoffs. You're going to travel to CB South Friday. I know it's a little odd day because we we're not in school on Friday. So, obviously, talk about and it's obviously going to be a longer trip down the turnpike for you guys on Friday. So what do you have the, what's in the preparation for that for Friday since um, you're not seeing the kids? Yeah, logistically we have to eat a little earlier than we normally would and leave a little normal or a little earlier than we normally would, but not too much. Um, like you're not going to bring them in the morning or anything like that. You'll bring them no. in for their meal and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do our pregame walkthrough like usual and, and go from there. But um, we're probably, we're a half an hour earlier than we normally would okay. be. Okay, so nothing too crazy yeah. for it. All right, so let's get to the gets back to the game with Potsgrove. Um, so once again, the turnovers don't help your defense a look in the game as well, too. But maybe a glaring idea is at the end of the day, they rush for over 200 yards against you guys. And I think we know, if we remember from last year, what we're going to see from Central Bucks South again yeah. here on Friday night. So that has to be a little bit of a – Oh, it's a big, like a it's a big concern. Warning, not hit a little the bell. Bit, yeah. Not a little bit. It's a big concern. Big concern. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things, again, sometimes when, you know, you have inexperienced players on the field, um, the, the reading part is difficult. That's the biggest part for them is the seeing what's in front of them and not just kind of glazing over what's in front of them. And specifically what I'm talking about is like the action of the offensive line. So there were a number of situations where you, you, we didn't wrong shoulder. Oh, that's been a long time since we talked about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, there were a number of times where like the guard and tackle is either pulling towards you or away from you and you're ducking inside, you know, or stepping the wrong way. Um, and you know, clearly we do this in practice, like yeah. we practice this stuff, but, um, again, it's a different thing when it's on a Friday night. And so if that happens, a guard and tackle are coming your way and you duck inside now they have no one to block. Now there's two, they're, they're headed right for the yeah. safeties and that's no good. And then, you know, the other thing, if it's away from you, all right, you shouldn't be, you know, coming up on the edge, you should be pursuing. And so we just need to work on our eye discipline. You know, they are, we were working on that in practice, our eye discipline. And, um, you know, I think the other thing we didn't mention on special teams, like we had a bad luck deal on special teams where a punt Muff rolled punt, into a player, but we also had somebody not do what he's supposed to do on punt block team, which is make sure they don't run a fake. And you duck inside and they get a long run and and some and of those guys are some of those guys are seniors and, and have been on the team all year. So um you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's frustrating for everybody involved. It's frustrating for kids. It's frustrating for the staff. And, um, you know, all we can do is work on those things and try to get better. You know, they're, they're, there's two options, quit or try to get better. And we're certainly not going to do that. Well, that that's leads quit. to here before we do the highlights here. So we're in a position here where we're going. We're in districts here. You got a lot of new guys. Everybody looks at, you know, what CB South has done, what they did the last year. How do you keep the kids motivated? How do you keep the staff motivated here? Like, I think, once again, as you're, you're the guy, what's something you've been really focused on this week and trying to motivate the kids and the coaches to say, hey, you know. Yeah. One of the things that we said is like, listen, we, we, let's just go have fun. For some of our guys, it's going to be the last game of football they ever play. Um, so, you know, when they went out when they were in fourth grade and played football, they were there to have fun. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, obviously results matter in, in kind of did you have fun or not. But at the end of the day, like, let's go out and give it our best shot and have fun. And, you know, there's – you know, you usually say man down, next guy up. We're saying next nine guys up, yeah. you know, like 
Um, that's tough to overcome, but we're not going to go in with a defeatist attitude. We're going to, again, you know, we shortened practice a little bit, so we're um, ready to roll on Friday in terms of our, our bodies and um, being fresh. And, you know, we're trying to uh, really stress that, to have fun. Like, here's, you know, guys like Jordan Marsilio, we talked about him before, but Jordan's been, if he's been 80% all year, that's probably high. And that kid has played, and you know, just as an example, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try to give him the best experience we can, and that's what it, I'm saying, trying to say to the underclassmen, like, hey, when you're seniors, you want the underclassmen to help you get the best senior season that you can possibly get, and and obviously, this has not gone the way that we wanted it to go um, for anybody, um, but. We're, here we are in playoffs. we got one more game, and we're going to give it the best shot we can. All right. Sounds good, Coach. Good answer. Right, let's check out the defensive highlights from Springford Potsgrave. Defensive highlights are sponsored by JC's Catering. So one thing about Friday that was, that was a really nice – this was early. We got an interception. That's Owen Lehman, who's um, playing for Dalen Palmer, who's injured. Um, Owen Lehman does a nice job, jumps that uh, screen pass, and they were actually downfield. Their linemen were um, the, too the, far down. The, well, the running back was downfield too. But nice play here. Um, that was Giassi Romeo um, jumping in there, and Nick Garzarella flashes by. Um, but And here's Shane Lewis. There's another one. Shane Lewis has just done, you know, he hasn't been 100% all year. Um, but he comes out and he plays his rear end off. and He beats the block there, essentially, the block to make there. that play, yeah. And these are guys that have played in our program. You know, Shane's a – should be a three-year all-league guy. Um, and we're just going to – we're going to play our rear ends off for looks them. Looks like there they maybe want to throw like a halfback pass. Yeah, looks like. yeah, we caught him in it. Um, they didn't block the end. So there, there's – so sometimes we do. So we're capable, right? Yeah. There they run um, – counter tray actually counter lead with a tight end and uh, we're capable if we do it the right way and we see it and we diagnose it we're capable of making plays but um, you got to do it every time yeah, you can't right. you know you you make a mistake one time and they get a 40 yard gain well that's so if you stop them on first and second down for two yards and then they hit but one they hit 40. 40 it's still yeah you know and no offense that's Potsgrove that's going to be the eight seed in the 5A plays. Now you've got the number one seed in the 6A plays. Yeah, Potsgrove's offensive line is really good, though. Uh, probably not as, to, in fairness, not as good as Central Bucks South. Um, but um, they're very good, too. Okay. So. All right. Well, we're going to take one more commercial break here, and we'll be back to preview the game with Central Bucks South. Welcome back to the Gridiron, sponsored by Patriots Chevrolet. I'm your host, John Brown, with the head coach, Chad Brubaker. All right, coach, we've alluded to it. Uh, Central Bucks South coming in or going there this Friday night. They're the number one seed. I did some journalist research before the game. They have wins over one, two, three, six teams that are in the playoffs. Five of those in the 6A, Upper Dublin being a 5A team. They've beaten the 9 seed, the 3 seed, the 14 seed, the 4 and the 10 seed in the 6A playoffs. I did some math here, too. You know how many – you can read it here. You're looking over my sheet. They've allowed 71 points this year. The most they allowed in the game was 17. They're allowing essentially a touchdown per game. Like you said, it is a tall task. And yeah. once again, we played Central Bucks South last year in the second round here. And um, once again, it was a game for a point, and then they just kind of found a way to stretch it out as the game went on, too. Yeah, they, um, they don't do anything fancy. You know, they um – they line up and they run downhill. Um, they're huge, uh, bigger this year than they were last year. Um, you know, their quarterback is back this year. They do throw a little more um, than they did last. I think they threw two times against yeah, was, us. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, they're big up front. Like they, like I said, they don't do anything fancy. They run downhill at you. They. Um, so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pull your pants up and go like, play some football. Tighten your belt. And once again, you kind of talked about it a little bit. Is that you're gonna, you're, you're gonna have these linebackers, these secondary guys that might be new. And then all of a sudden, you got this big boy coming right at you, and it's tough to, 
stand in and do what you got to do in those situations as well too. Yeah, and we're you know we'll do our best as a coaching staff to try to put them into the best possible scenarios that we can. Um, but yeah, you're right. There's going to be times where it's going to be one on one and um, their guy against our guy, and we'll see if you know our guys step up. And again, it's it's a playoff game. Um, we'll see what happens. All right, so we're going to look at their offensive highlights here, but you're going to see the, the quarterback that can obviously run the football. Yeah, and obviously he's their the, leading rusher. And they're running back. You know, they can hand the ball off, and they're running. You, know, you can essentially, I don't know if I'm right, they can have two 1,000 guys rushing the ball oh, absolutely. when it's all said and done at the yeah. end of the year, right? Yeah, they will. Okay, so just make sure, once again, here, let's get ready for the run. Let's check out the offensive highlights of Central Buck South. Upcoming game highlights are sponsored by Tom's Car Wash. Well, who are so they playing here? Okay. This is them against Penridge last week. Last week, okay. You know, right there is uh, they had him, then they didn't. The camera, camera can't keep up with him. But uh, it's a, b a huge gain. Again, they'll hand the ball off. There was a, some counter action. And uh, Penridge had a chance to stop that at the line of scrimmage and, and couldn't. Um, He's not dancing or anything like that. It's just head no. down and going. Here's an actual throw. Um, they do a nice job there of, you know, here's the thing. They can play action you very well because, you know, you get lulled to sleep on run on the run game stuff. Here and they hit with the blitz and they still beat the blitz. Yeah, they didn't. I, I would like to see that if they handled that the way, Penridge handled that the way they drew it up. Okay. But here's the quarterback um, making guys miss all over the place and getting into the end zone. So, he made like three guys miss on that play, and he's he's not, um, you know, you wouldn't say that he's, you know, six foot three or two hundred and fifteen pounds or runs a, you know, four six. But he but knows he, how to run this. He offense. knows how to run this offense, and he is tough. All right. Um, okay. Did they beat the sixteen seed? Uh, who? Not yet. It's not on the there sheet yet. Go. They haven't beaten the 16 seed yet. That sort of thing. Now, the other thing about they played some tight games. They have very they're tight 10, games. They're yes. 10 and 0. Um, I think they had two games where it was 14 to seven. They won. Yeah. Um, I think they won a game like 17 14. Yeah. They, they beat CB West on the last, last play, play of the, of the game, game on yeah. a hail mary type deal. So, um, and that's just that's them that's them benefiting from last year winning the district title, and kind of like learning how to win. Yeah. So like you said, when you look at here, the, who they beat, we, you know, we had a schedule where you had opportunity to play these types of teams and get these wins. And, you know, once again, Came we talked short. about, and you talked about who was on this team versus week one versus week 10, that sort of thing. But this script could have very been easily flipped for you guys, where you're talking about you guys being the one to yeah, the you, top four seed for you guys. You give us all our guys for the whole season and we're easily a top six team in the district right now. Um, but that, wasn't to be yeah, and, and it was not in the cards and you know we're not used to this scenario I mean we're used to making playoffs like mm -hmm. we are the we have the longest streak in district one for making playoffs in 6a so um, you know it was good in terms of our goals we didn't reach a lot of our goals but, making the but we did play. make the district playoffs and we're gonna you know do our best all right what are you gonna see from defensively well, they, they play a 3-4, but they play it um, very differently than a lot of teams, and they are huge up front, like huge and strong. Um, they A lot of teams will bring linebackers up on the line of scrimmage. They don't do that. They're, They're basically saying, like, our five guys in the middle, and, and post-snap they will, but our five guys in the middle are going to be able to control your run game. And um, that allows them to play extra guys in the secondary, so essentially – you know, if, if you spread them out, they're still going to have six guys in the s secondary, whereas a lot of teams would only have five. Um, so, you know, they're going to try to say our front five are going to control your run game and we're going to stop your passing game. With the other guys. All right, let's take a look at, at Central Buck South on defense. Upcoming game highlights are sponsored by Tom's Car Wash. So they, are, they made me a liar right there. They brought an extra guy up on the line of scrimmage. But um, it was I think that was a third and long situation. But you see there right there, they have five guys. The linebacker shows real quickly to stop that play. Um, unbelievable. Penridge is running some condensed sets. So you will see more guys in the box against them because right, there's no one to spread out to. Um, 
there they're a little spread, but you can see like the they Jets do a, going nowhere. They do a tremendous job, and their safeties and linebackers are big time hitters. And this is just you know no good from a Penridge Ram perspective. Um, a pick six there. He got had to throw off his back foot because of the pressure, and then. Yeah, once again, they know who their personnel is. They know what they can do with their personnel. And they're just going to say, here you go. Go ahead yeah. and try and stop us or go ahead and go try and beat us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and again, like it's nothing that they're doing that's like, you know, Groundbreaking. Out, outlandish or anything. They're just really they, good. At they've what they got do. some dudes right now and, you know, they're going to use them. All right. Well, uh, best of luck to you and the crew Friday night. Thank you. All right. Make sure you tune in next week as we recap the gridiron and the game with Central Bucks South. For that coach, Chad Brubaker, I'm John Brennan. See you next time.